The Silicon Valley Bank, one of the top-rated banks in the U.S., has filed for bankruptcy. It is the largest U.S. bank failure since 2008. What exactly happened with this bank? And how could a bank that is known as too big to fail have failed in just 48 hours? The SVB is known as a tech startup bank, which means the bank holds the money of the majority of tech companies in Silicon Valley. The bank has $210 billion in assets, then how come the bank went bankrupt in just 48 hours? The story starts a couple of years ago, but the effect you saw was in just 48 hours. But before we go into that, you need to understand that every bank invests depositors' money in some safe investments. Government bonds are considered a very safe investment. Also, you need to keep in mind that when government increases the interest rates, the value of the already invested bonds go down. Now, to understand what exactly happened to the Silicon Valley Bank, this next part is very important, so listen very carefully. In order to make money, banks invest their customers' money in government securities. These securities are of two types. One is HTM, also known as Hold Till Maturity, and the other is AFS, also known as Available for Sale. The difference between these two is that HTM is a long-term bond and AFS is a short-term bond. The HTM is the safest, has almost no risk, and does not depend on the market value of the bond. So if a bank invests $1 billion in HTM, it will get $1 billion plus interest generated at maturity. On the other hand, AFS are short-term bonds and their value depends on the market. So if banks invest $1 billion in AFS and its market value rises by 10%, then the bank made $100 million in profit on their investments. Now, while doing investment, banks have to decide in the beginning where they want to put their money. If they put their money in HTM and sell even one bond before maturity, they are forced to reorganize their whole portfolio again. In the case of AFS, banks can sell the bonds as per their wishes. By 2020, the majority of the banks had invested 75% of their portfolio in AFS securities. But to keep inflation under control after COVID, the U.S. government started to increase the interest rate. Because of this, the value of the bonds started to decline. So the major banks like JP Morgan started to convert their AFS bonds to HTM bonds. Basically, they minimize their risk. While doing this switch of investment from AFS to HTM, different banks adopted different strategies. JP Morgan thought the interest rate might increase more, so they chose to decrease their AFS bond holding and choose to hold the cash rather than invest it again. Morgan Stanley, Citibank, also did the same. The Silicon Valley Bank did not anticipate the risk and didn't implement any strategy. On top of that, the HTM investments made by the SVB were in riskier assets, such as mortgage-backed securities. While well, mortgage-backed securities are secured against mortgages on houses, commercial buildings, or large consumer purchases, mortgage-backed securities are the reason that the world faced 2008 financial crisis. When interest rates rise, the probability that some of these mortgage holders will default on their payments rises, causing the value of mortgage-backed securities to fall. The Silicon Valley Bank kept 79% of its deposits in such a riskier HTM. Even though bank management was not able to anticipate the risk, but the bank's customers did, they looked at the market and the balance sheet of the bank and calculated that the bank's bond deposits are in $18 billion in losses, according to the current market value. The SVB had only $11 billion to cover those losses. As the SVB holds most of the startup company's money, the companies were struggling to generate capital because of high interest rates. So the companies chose to take their savings funds out of the bank to run their everyday activities. And because of this, the problem got even bigger. So in order to pay their customers, SVB needed money. So they sold some of their AFS bonds in $1.8 billion loss. 
The condition of SVB was known to everyone in the financial market in February of 2023. But the real panic began when, on March 8th, another bank in the valley known as Silvergate failed. This bank's main customers were the crypto exchanges. And because of this, a digital bank run happened at SVB. And all the VC instructed their accountants to take money from SVB. On the 9th of March, SVB had $42 billion worth of withdrawal orders. In the next two days, SVB filed for bankruptcy. This is how the SVB bank failed in just 48 hours. There were many mistakes made by the bank management. Like for the better part of the year 2022, the bank didn't have a chief risk officer. One of the mistakes of the SVB bank was that they did not have any diverse customers. All their customers were from the startup ecosystem. Being in the same niche, the word around SVB on the verge of failure spread even faster. That resulted in a lot more withdrawal orders for SVB. Another thing is that the senior management and the CEO himself were selling the stock of the bank on the verge of its failure, which raised more suspicion among the bank's customers. We hope you understood exactly what led to the failure of the Silicon Valley Bank. And if you found this video helpful, then give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more such content.